Uh, my name is uh, Aniela and I'm from the Netherlands, so excuse me if I'm not pronouncing everything in correct English today. Um, this is what I do. This is not who I am. Um, I don't know who I am. Um, I just know what I do. Uh, so please be free to stick some title on me, uh, whatever you prefer. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the multi and interdisciplinary work that I'm doing. Uh, but first I start with my background. I have a background in, in fashion design. I studied art academy in uh, the Netherlands. And after that, I worked uh, in fashion companies from men's, women's wear, uh, children's wear, pattern design. And so this is the background that I have. And at a certain point, uh, I was like, okay, what's, what's up next? And um, well, we all have opinions about fashion. And I thought I needed to change mine because uh, textiles can do so much more. And so I started looking into uh, um, technology and uh, started collaborating with uh, universities and technology uh, companies. Um, here's just a, a sum up of it. Um, but actually where I'm going at is, is what I think uh, way more interesting. Um, I'm interested in biomimicry and the way how we can use it to be get inspiration out of it. And uh, I work with uh, technology and microbiology. So on one hand, um, I use technology to mimic life. And on the other hand, I'm really working with life. And so for me, uh, my background as fashion design is still uh, up here. But um, I'm interested in textiles uh, functioning as living systems. And so here you have some examples of it. And I will tell you about two uh, projects. Uh, one of them is uh, about the metabolism. And the other is uh, about the life cycle. And so the metabolism, I always explain it like very easy. Um, as a human being, you need food. And with that food, you get the energy uh, in order to be able to do exercises, to keep you warm, to um, have your heart uh, work working or your lungs pumping. Um, and so with that idea, I started looking into the human body. And I looked into the different topographies that we have. And so I'm going to show you some of the, the pre-research I did before making uh, a final uh, fashion tech garment. So on the left side is always the topography. So it's very clinical, very straightforward. I have some examples in this case um, um, of the bacteria that I was growing. So these are, this is my skin bacteria and this is a bit of a larger picture. And what I wanted to do with this uh, dress, because um, I made this is the final piece, is really to show how would it actually look like if we were able to see our bacteria. And so I 3D print, uh, sorry, I digitally printed uh, our uh, a pattern of our bacteria and on a transparent organza. So if you wear this, you would have an idea of how it would look like to, uh, yeah, to wear your own bacteria. Another thing that I find very interesting is, uh, is the muscles. And the way that we develop patterns is always, we have side seams, we have shoulder seams, it's really like plain and simple. But our body is actually so much more interesting. So what happens if I start making patterns inspired by the, um, the way that our muscles are uh, going? So um, this a, is a, a jacket that I made and it doesn't have straight uh, side seams, it has diagonal side seams because our uh, front uh, abdominal muscles are going a little bit to the back and our back muscles are going a bit to the front. We don't have uh, uh, shoulder seams. Uh, our muscles are going a bit more to the front. So with that in mind, I, uh, I started to make uh, this uh, uh, leotard, which is showing actually the, the way it would look if we make patterns based on our uh, body muscles. And for me, um, I try to bridge the link between technology and the human being. And in this case, I think uh, our human head is actually like a microcontroller in which we control the rest of our body. And so with the nerve system on the left side, I try to do uh, different, uh, um, um, I, I look into pattern design, I look into uh, 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 seams and stuff like that. And I de develop this uh, outfit. Uh, which is uh, showing actually each point of our head that measures an EEG. So where our brain signals are measured, it has a little chain and it goes to the rest of our body as a, a visualization of how we control our, um, our body. And the last one that I'm going to show you is the blood circulation cape. And for me, the blood circulation is similar to electricity. 
uh, with blood going through your heart, going through different kinds of lungs and coming back to your heart. Uh, with electricity, it's coming from the battery, it's going through sensors to LEDs, whatever you put in between it, and then it goes uh, back to a battery. And so I developed this cape uh, showing, it's from Red Tool, and actually it's showing like the big uh, um, veins that we have, but the more they get from out of the center of the body, the smaller the veins get. So that's what <coughs> the tool is representative. And so with this, I made a, a technology outfit, and it is called uh, uh, Dynamic Skin. And actually it's three layers um, from our metabolism uh, translated into textiles. I also have them here. So I start with the first layer, and um, that is the solar cape. And so now I've you have the research on this side, and what I think is, uh, what I also wanted to show is actually that whenever working with technology, you need to combine uh, working with technology and designing with technology. So while testing the solar cells and different components, you also have to think about the way that, that you want to design it. And so this is uh, a cape. And the solar cells are the little pieces here. So my idea is also to make technology more organic and, and um, I don't think people want to look like robots. I think we want to wear normal clothes and, and have the technology not uh, visible. And so that's what I uh, try to do. You're more than welcome to have a look later. Underneath, um, so this is actually, the, the solar cape is the uh, part that you gain energy. And you can use that energy. I, I would love to have those lungs now. Because um, what this uh, dress is underneath, and uh, give me se 20 seconds, it has a pulse sensor on it. And so every time that my heart beats, uh, it probably will be a bit quicker than normal. Because um, <laughs> I have a very low heart rate. <laughs> Um, every time my heart beats, these start to flicker and it's showing actually that blood is going through the lungs in order to get oxygen. And after that, I don't know if it's really visible, um, there are more lights and they show actually how blood is going from my lungs uh, through the rest of our body. So this is underneath it. And then there's a third layer because uh, that's more like the exercise. And the third layer is keeping us warm. And whenever uh, this garment is keeping us warm, uh, this bright red pattern will appear. And it's uh, the also showing that actually we get warmed up from the inside of our body. Uh, so it's a, a digital, um, um, it's a visualization of the blood circulation. So this is one side of my work and uh, now something completely different. Uh, the biological life cycle, and this is more on the microbiology level. And um, I don't know if many of you saw Maurizio uh, Montalti yesterday. Um, this is something that I started uh, in collaboration with him. And so this is mycelium, and mycelium are the filaments of a fungus. Um, they also call it the root of mushrooms. And I thought uh, when I saw an open call from the University of Utrecht, Officina Corpus Coli and um, Mediamatic, um, they told me what, what uh, mycelium could do, and for me this was really already like fabric. And so um, what has been done before was really uh, using it in combination with the substrate. And so what you do is basically um, you grow it uh, with, uh, you grow the mycelium together with, uh, in this case, straw, and you compress it into a nice shape. And when you heat it up, uh, you have this nice uh, bowls and, uh, and plates. Uh, think also about bricks to build houses, uh, which are really lightweight and, and uh, they are fire resistant. But I didn't have any clue on how to grow fungi. I had done some things with slime molds uh, just to get acquainted with it. Uh, so this is actually uh, the first time that I started growing uh, mycelium. And so mycelium grows exponential, which means it's, it doubles up every time. And so I have here a petri dish with mycelium, and uh, one piece is taken out and put into a new dish. And that's actually how you start uh, working on uh, mycelium. And this is my first one. So it's really not that nice. Actually, I'm growing them, luckily, uh, much nicer now. So it's all fluffy, and it's like normally it's growing really equally outside. But I was really happy with it. And so the first time growing something, it's really amazing. It's like every day you look at it, it's having a little pet, and okay, do I need to do something to it? Uh, uh, and just leave it inside is actually the best. Uh. 
And so initially I started uh, working with combining it with textiles and the idea was to get rid of a lot of textiles. And uh, unfortunately that didn't work out. And so I started digging in my house uh, to find liquids and it's really not a scientific way. Um, but after that, uh, uh, I found some results and then I started looking into more scientific uh, uh, parts like pH uh, levels and stuff like that. And I found a way to uh, have it remain flexible because normally when uh, it's drying, oh, I really uh, am talking too much. Um, I, I skip this, I skip this. So this is uh, when it's dried and what I did to it so it remains flexible. And uh, by scaling it up, this is me working in the lab. Yeah, I'm really, because he's really brutal. So this is the garment that I made. And with this, um, I think I should end with uh, this remark, is um, that why do we still make clothes that last for 40 years uh, if we only wear them for one or two years? And with this project, I'm really, I'm not looking into circular. I'm looking in the biolog biological life cycle. And I think um, making things circular can also be quite harmful because you use a lot of, of chemicals and energy to do it. And maybe we should relook into materials that just go from no waste to natural waste. Thank you. <laughs>